Hey, hey, it's Mega, aka the Art Messiah, here to save you from your art sins. Welcome back to day 29 of the 30 Days of Making Comics Challenge. Today we're going to be talking about five tips that you can use and implement to help grow an audience for your story and your art. So, last week we kind of talked about how to uh, talk about your art, explain your art to get people interested. But now we're going to dive into a little bit more specifics and what you can do, um, where you can be posting, and how you can start to develop your own very specific and um, niche audience. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The tip number one, which also comes from my girlfriend, is being true to yourself and putting your work out there. Um, so being true to yourself before you, you even start trying to gain an audience, I think it's important to kind of figure out what it is that you are trying to say and what you're trying to tell and um, who you are as an artist, as we kind of talked about last week. So, you know, in that development stage, you're kind of just posting and practices and artworks and, and fan arts starting to develop your style and... I'll make a specific video about how to develop or start to develop a style, um, but you're really just trying to figure out what makes you tick, what really makes you excited, um, and you know what you want to express and how you want to express yourself. Um, and one good way to do that is to start putting your work out there because um, it just gets you into this mindset of, I am going to produce something and um, it can kind of maybe kickstart some ideas and kickstart your process. So that is tip number one. Um, find out what you're interested in and who you are as an artist. Moving into step two, um, this is very important, a very big step, and that is finding your target audience. So once you find out who you are and what you're interested in, then you have to think, okay, who am I trying to reach um, and why am I trying to reach them? So you already know like what makes you tick as an artist and what make you get into art. But when it comes to the story and the story creation, you have to think about the, the demographic, the type of people that will be reading your comic um, specifically. And of course, um, other people outside that that target audience will check out your work but you want to start off thinking about who you're creating this work for so in my story ignition um, it's about um, these mechanics uh, young mechanics that are really implementing engineering principles and um, combining it with a very shonen-esque type um, manga style where it's going to be very adventure, action, and plot driven. Um, so my target audience, you know, then falls within that category of, you know, 10 year olds to 18 year olds that are interested in, you know, mechanics and math. Well, maybe not even math, but um, those those kinds of topics. Um, so I want you to sit down. I want you to grab a piece of paper or maybe just sit down in front of your um, computer. And I want you to write out who your target audience is. I want you to list out the age range. I want you to list out um, the things that they would be interested in and try to get a picture of who it is that you want to reach out to, right? Okay, so you got your target audience. Another another quick thing I want to say about the target audience is um, once you have that listed out, you then want to kind of think about the social media that kind of targets those specific um, um, audience members that you're looking for. So for example, it's like Instagram is, well, kind of was, um, a lot of like younger people and still is but there's also a shift to TikTok for really um, uh, young people and then Facebook is kind of like an older crowd so do some research into where your target audience is going to be at 
And uh, that's the last thing that I want to say for tip number two and finding your target audience is um, figure out where your target audience is actually going to exist and where they like to gather. Okay, moving into the third tip, and that is making connections. So you've got, you know, the story, this great idea, you know who you are, you know what your target audience is. Now it's time for you to really flesh out this art, this story, and this style by making connections with other people that kind of fit within your um, niche. And by doing so, you can not only learn a lot of different things that you didn't know before, but you can also start to get some feedback and critical um, advice info that can help you grow as an artist and if you're interested in growing an audience, then it might be able to give you some pointers in um, how to post, where to post, um, what kind of stuff to post. And it's honestly just a lot of fun to have a, a lot of peer, um, um, I guess, uh, peer members that you can grow together with. You know, it's kind of hard being an artist because you're in isolation uh, a lot, but having some peer artists that you can really bounce ideas off of, you're kind of in the same niche. It's a lot of fun. It brings a lot of kind of excitement, um, both to your own work and hopefully to their work as well. So an example of that is um, if you've seen um, some of my other videos, I do artist interviews. And that's a great chance for me to kind of disconnect with other artists that are in my niche. It's a lot of fun. Um, I get to learn a lot of different stuff um, about drawing and the drawing process. And, you know, it's just overall a great time. So making connections is going to help you grow your audience even more. So moving into tip four is make art that serves a purpose. So um, a lot of beginner artists, they post like a bunch of um, like random pieces like, okay, well, you know, today I'm drawing this, another day I'm drawing something completely different. And that's great. You want to do that and you actually want to keep and maintain doing that as you continue to grow as an artist. But also know that that's kind of like your sketchbook. That's stuff that you want to put in your sketchbook that's you growing as an artist and getting ideas when it comes to actually promoting your work and being on platforms such as like instagram people are looking for more finished works and for artwork that serves a purpose so a lot of people really enjoy seeing you know stuff they're already interested in so they they're going to enjoy seeing you know fan arts fan arts are their favorite shows their favorite movies their favorite video games and it's because it's something that they can easily connect with. So when you're posting to try to gain an audience, just make sure you're posting stuff that is serving a purpose. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be fan art or anything in that category, um, but think about what the audience will get out of um, looking at your work. So since I'm kind of interested in learning and becoming a better teacher, um, I wanted to have my YouTube channel to help do that. And um, so what the audience will get out of it is learning um, about drawing, about making comics, okay? So that serves a, pur a purpose for people watching it, you know? People aren't just gonna watch a random uh, video of me unless I was a crazy, um, you know amazing artist that I just already had recognition um, people are going to like your artwork and like what you're doing because it helps them and it benefits them in some way so I want you to think about that as well so on that same piece of paper where you wrote down your target audience also write down what is your target audience going to get from your piece of artwork or your story whatever the content it is that you're producing so that leads into my final and last point and um, maybe a point that's kind of argued a lot and uh, that is making fan art. Um, and that's my fifth tip in kind of growing an audience. And like I said in the previous tip, 
um, people want to be entertained. They want to gain some value um, when they go on Instagram or when they go online. So you have to make stuff with that in mind that you are trying to give your audience an experience or something that they need or something that they want. So making fan art is a great way to do that because it's a common interest that they can easily relate to because it's their favorite show, it's their favorite movie, um, something that they already like. So the way I kind of think about fan arts and going about it is I would not create fan arts of things that you're not necessarily interested in. Um, so like if you've never watched a certain movie say you've never watched like lord of the rings then i wouldn't make a fan art of lord of the rings just because it's you know a movie that's well known or if it's like a trendy show or something that's just you know new and trending like my hero or something if you don't watch it then don't make a fan art of it but if it's something that you uh, enjoy and you know something that you've always been a fan of and you think that it can bring some value to the work and story you're creating and has some connection, then that's a great way to um, uh, build an audience while also maintaining your kind of integrity, let's say. And um, so I make a lot of Mega Man fan arts because it's like I've been playing Mega Man video games for a very long time and um, it's something that's kind of related to my story because it's uh, techno technology, um, related and um, I really like the character designs I really like the art style so that's why I, I do a lot of Mega Man fan arts but if you're gonna do fan arts figure out what works for you and if it's not your thing if you feel like you're just doing that because you're trying to please an audience then don't do it right you don't have to make fan arts to grow an audience it can just be an easy way to start to build an audience when you're just new you're just beginning um, but people will respect um, your artwork and your your own personality and your own take on things. So um, I think that is the most important takeaway out of all of this is that very first point, which is being true to yourself, because that's why people are going to keep on coming back over and over, because that's going to be unique. That's going to be something specific to you. So. Hopefully those tips kind of helped you guys out. If they did, let me know. Um, I have one more um, video in this series, and that is going to be about um, what social media to be on and where to post your comics. And we're gonna discuss the pros and cons of each website. So be on the lookout for that. And um, until next time, um, peace and love y'all and deuces.